Hi Craig, I'm actually going to be uh, doing my little test video here for you now. So I've already got this thing sweeping. My phone's not holding much data, so I actually had to start this right away. So there's my uh, front panel, and you can see that it's doing the sweep. We're at 12 kilohertz, 13 kilohertz, still at 13. It's doing 1 kilohertz steps right now, and then when it gets close to the 3 dB cutoff, it goes down to 100, kilo, 100 hertz. Uh, so it can actually nail really close to that 3 dB cutoff point. So I'm just going to go through really quick. So this is my uh, calculation I do. So I enter in my values and I get out my FC. It also calculates my uh, upper and lower cutoff frequency. So this shows my frequency in real time, my capacitive reactants um, calculator. Yeah, sorry my brain fart. So this shows my capacitive reactance in real time according to this frequency. Up here we get this current sampling frequency, the iteration count that, that records the data points, my step increments, so we're right actually into a pass condition right now, so it's doing 100 hertz steps. It's showing my AV gain, my dB, uh, 20 log gain. So we're right around minus 3 here now. So I'll come over here, I'll just expand this and show you what's going on. So this is my logarithmic area where I do the calculations for log. This is my uh, stop conditions. I have three stop conditions, either override or do uh, it stops at when it sees uh, less than minus 10 dB or when it gets to 10 FC. So here is where I do my calculations, my FC. Uh, capacitive reactance calculation over here. So this is uh, like uh, two Boolean um, trues. When these two Boolean trues are are true, I get a pass condition. So when I get within plus or minus 0.3 dB and within the cutoff frequency of 5% plus or minus, I get a pass. Otherwise, I get a fail, and it actually changes from 100 hertz to one kilohertz when it goes back to a, a fail condition. So that way we're not you know, sweeping 100 hertz in a fail condition, which is kind of a waste of time. Here's my oscilloscope code. I got channel one, channel two, frequency, volts peak to peak, channel one, volts peak to peak, channel two. There's my function generator code. I'm doing one over and to get my proper two periods on the scope. There's where everything is set up initially. I put a little time delay there, and everything gets sent here. I got it's, it's being printed to this to instrument, instrument control test. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, my headers, printing my data, and then I actually printing the pass or fail, and I'm, uh, I have it transposed. So instead of going across the screen, it goes down. That drove me nuts. <laughs> so I couldn't get it to actually print one pass or one fail. And rather, it's actually just printing everything in real time. That was the only thing I couldn't figure out with this. Um, everything else was good, and that's the same as this. Like It'll go into a real-time pass or fail, which was kind of annoying. I wish I could actually have had to set it so it sets, it latches onto a pass and stays there if it passes. I'm sure if I had more time to mess around with some Boolean stuff, I'd figure it out, but I just could not figure it out. So. It's going to come to uh, minus 10 uh, dB log and it'll stop. It'll stop here before it actually gets to the upper cutoff frequency. So, yeah, so here we go. We're just waiting for a stop. And it's getting there. Almost 60 some hertz. And then I'll show you the file it printed to. And I appreciate this very much, Craig. Spent a lot of time trying to get this working and uh, everything just bottlenecked. So. Okay, there we go. It stopped. Now I will take you to automated uh, instruments test. Notepad. I'm going to lose the camera time here soon. So there we go. There's my sweeps. My my headers were printed. My fails. And there's my passes. So it did pass. Okay. Thanks, Craig. I'll upload this. And thank you very much. 
and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.